Yes, thank you, ladies, as we get into God's Word this morning. Um, thank you to each and every single one of you for coming through this morning. Um, I know that you are going to be, be blessed. I don't know if you, if you are happy where you are seated, but if you do want to, like, make your way forward a little bit, you're welcome to come forward a little bit and get in amongst the, the ladies this morning. But if you're happy and comfortable where you are, that's okay, too. Um, so in your little gift bag, you would have seen... Um, there's just random little things that were in there, but um, there's a Kit Kat in there, and there's some um, ladies who have businesses that they gave um, their business card, or um, there's also a gift voucher or a, like a discount card in there. Um, but also you will see in there, there is, it says salt dough, so I hope nobody tried to eat it this morning. <laughs> <laughs> um, mine is locked in my office, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't have my keys on me this morning. Only I passed the Kelly's keys, and so I couldn't get into my office this morning. But we have a salt dough there, um, so we'll keep it handy. We will be doing something with it a little later on. But in the other little bag is a wet wipe. It's called a refresher something, a refresher wipe. So um, if you need that, it's also there for you. You can keep that on hand. So this morning, ladies, I just want to say a very big thank you for being here and joining us this morning. I, I, I stand to be corrected, but there are close on 120 ladies this morning that are here, if I'm correct. Um, so that's just wonderful that we can gather on a Saturday morning. And thank you, as, as Liz said, thank you for taking time out to come to the Potter's house this morning. Um, so it's a, definitely a humbling occasion for me to stand here before you, beautiful ladies that God has created, his daughters. And so um, just want to say thank you. Um, as we take time, as we set time aside this morning to sit and allow Holy Spirit to minister to us, to do the work in our hearts that he has planned long ago. Um, so the title of our conference this morning is, yes, we know, we saw it, in the potter's hands. So it's not a secret as to what it is that we are going to be working through this morning. Um, and I'd suggest this morning that there are two types of ladies here this morning, um, sensory seeking and sensory sensitive ladies. What do I mean by this? Okay, let me just break it down a little bit. So for those of you who are sensory seeking, you don't mind getting your hands dirty working in the garden, baking, rolling biscuits, working with paint and glue, then maybe there are those of you who are like me, who are a little bit sensory sensitive, and getting your hands dirty is the last thing that you like to do. If you work in the garden, you make sure you've got your gardening gloves, like me. Um, I love baking and cooking, but I'm always washing and cleaning my hands, and doing crafts, the wet wipes have to be close by. So this morning, that is why I made sure that I found that refresher wipe so that if you were like me this morning, that you would need to clean your hands after what we get into this morning. But this morning, um, as we explore the concept of clay and the workman, the potter, God has something really special in store for us this morning. Um, let's start off. Typically, there are six different types of clay. Did you know that? <laughs> Six different types of clay that are naturally found. In other words, created by God. There's earthenware clay, stoneware clay, ball clay, fire clay, porcelain clay, and air dry clay. Each type of clay is unique in its properties and in its purpose. Now, most of us are aware of the Genesis 2 account where God creates all things from dust, of the dust of the earth, but special attention is given to Adam. God breathes his breath into Adam, and he comes alive. The Hebrew word here is neshama, not ruach. It's neshama. Now, for those of you who know Pastor Kelly likes Hebrew, so do I. So neshama means the actual breath or the act of breathing. This morning, would you take a few moments just to reflect on that and breathe this morning? In ancient times, or Bible times, in every town, there would have had to have been at least one potter. 
remembering that there was no plasticware, there was no home store to go to to go and get your plates and bowls and cups and mugs and side plates. There were no Tupperware containers for storage. Everything was made from clay. So when we read in Jeremiah 18, God speaks to Jeremiah telling him to go to the potter's house because God has a special message to reveal to Jeremiah there. It's not as if the potter's house was a foreign destination for Jeremiah to go to. He would have walked the streets and he would have seen the potter's house. In Isaiah, we read a few passages where Isaiah makes a statement referring to clay and the potter. This morning, Liz referenced that, and you also have a bookmark in your bag as well that has that scripture on for you this morning. And we know that the Bible is full of analogies that are relevant to the people um, and their surroundings at that specific time. But again, always remembering God made living beings from the dust of the earth. Let's read Jeremiah 18, verse 1 to 4 together if you have your Bibles. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Go down to the potter's house, and there I will give you my message. So I went down to the potter's house, and I saw him working at the wheel. But the pot he was shaping from the clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Our focus here is the clay being worked or shaped in the potter's hands. It was marred. What does that mean? It means it was blemished. It was not cooperating. It was not working out as the potter had wanted it to. But the potter didn't discard that lump of clay. Instead, he takes it and he reworks it. He takes care to rework, to shape it into the vessel he knows would better suit that lump of clay. We may think this morning we are marred, blemished, too far gone, too messed up, too dried out, unworkable. But the potter takes care. He takes his time with the clay. He knows knows this process is ultimately worth the outcome of the vessel that he has in mind, which has a specific purpose and intention. In Isaiah 64 verse 8, And yet, O Lord, you are our Father, We are the clay, and you are the potter. We are all formed by your hand. Here the prophet Isaiah is talking to God, realizing the destruction that would come because of the nation's sin, right? Isaiah says to God, you are our father. You created us. You are our creator. God, you made us what we are. God, continue to mold the clay in your hand so that we would become aware of ourselves as your children and turn back to doing the will of the creator, Potter. So at times, this this concept of being malleable, being able to be shaped and molded by God for his plans and purposes is twofold. We are to always be the clay being shaped from the inside out. Yet, We are also to be the finished vessel, which has an intended purpose and plan that the potter has created it for. Could you work with me this morning, ladies? I know it can get a little bit confusing. And um, to see our lives when surrendered to God, we will be following this following scripture, 2 Corinthians 3. Verse 16 to 18 says, But whenever someone turns to the Lord, the veil is taken away. For the Lord is the Spirit, and whenever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. So all of us who have had that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of the Lord. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like Him as we are changed into His glorious image. Hey, how cool is that scripture this morning? When we come to God, we turn to the Lord, we allow God to change us, to reflect His glorious image. Not just for our own benefit of salvation, which is really important, but also becoming more and more like Jesus into His image. We become less and less of a worrisome, 
marred lump of clay. As we go on to 2 Corinthians 4, verse 6 to 10, it says, For God who said, Let there be light in the darkness, he made this light shine in our hearts so we could know the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. We now have this light shining in our hearts, but we ourselves are like fragile clay jars containing this great treasure. This makes it clear that our great power is from God and not of ourselves. We are pressed on every side by troubles, and sometimes, yes, we are, but we are not crushed. We are perplexed, but not driven to despair. This morning, ladies, do not despair. We are hunted down, but never abandoned by God. We get knocked down, yes, but we are not destroyed. Through suffering, our bodies continue to share in the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be seen in our bodies. As the vessel takes on the shape the potter has intended for us, something that happens on the inside will be reflected on the outside of the vessel. The potter's gentle hands shape the clay from the inside. The walls of the vessel take shape, becoming lifted up to reveal its purpose. In the scripture, the purpose is to reveal the light. The light shines in our hearts to be a reminder to ourselves of God's glory, His Son, Jesus. The treasure we now house in our vessel is the wonderful truth of salvation, which is ours, but should also be poured out and reflected to others as we will fulfill the purpose of the vessel. Let us sit here for a bit this morning, the light that burns in our hearts. Reminds me of a scripture and a, a Bible verse that I grew up remembering that was in my heart. Matthew 5 verse 14 to 16. You are the light of the world. Like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Lighting a lamp nowadays would be something resembling a paraffin lamp that you may light. But in Bible times, oil lamps were made from clay. I would dare to suggest this morning that each and every single one of us are to be like that clay lamp. We, well remembering that the oil represents Holy Spirit, we are the vessel that carries the power of Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of God alive and burning within us is for our benefit, yes, but always to draw attention back to Father God. Isn't that a beautiful picture this morning, ladies? As I've been sharing on the malleable clay, and as I was allowing Holy Spirit to mold in me the word chosen for this morning, the word purpose and miracle kept coming up. This morning I would want to share two miracles that happened in the Bible where earthen vessels were used by God to bring about miracles, were used by God to do a thing that only could have been done by Him. So this morning, the, the definition for miracle is an extraordinary and welcomed event that cannot be explained by natural or scientific laws and therefore is attributed to a divine entity. Prophet Elijah and Prophet Elisha are the two men whom God uses to bring about these miracles. But there had to be vessels present in order for these miracles to take place. Do you know where I'm going with this this morning, ladies? Let us read these two extra extraordinary events. First Kings 17, verse 8 to 16. Then the Lord said to Elisha, 
Elijah, sorry. Go and live in the village of Zarephath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Zarephath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her, would you please bring me a little cup of water? As she was going to get it, he called to her, bring me a bite of bread too. But she said, I swear by the Lord your God that I don't have a single piece of bread in the house and I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal. Then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first. Then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. There will always be flour and oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rain and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and oil left in the containers, just as the, as the Lord had promised through Elijah. 2 Kings verse, chapter 4 verses 1 to 7 says, The wife of a man from the company of the prophets cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead, and you know that he revered the Lord, but now his creditor is coming to take my two boys as his slaves. Elisha replied to her, How can I help you? Tell me, what do you have in your house? Your servant has nothing there at all. Sometimes we feel we have nothing. She said, Except a small jar of olive oil. Elisha said, go around and ask all your neighbors for empty jars. Don't ask for just a few. Then go inside and shut the door behind you and your sons. Pour oil into all the jars, and as each is filled, put it to one side. She left him and shut the door be behind her and her sons. They brought the jars to her, and she kept pouring. When all the jars were full, she said to her son, bring me another one. But he replied, there is not a jar left. Then the oil stopped flowing. She went and told the man of God, and he said, Go and sell the oil and pay your debts. You and your sons can live on what is left. Firstly, we see that there is a need here. Both widows are faced with a life or death situation. God sends the prophets along at just the right time. The act of obedience is needed from both the prophets and the widows. Elijah and Elisha gave instructions that seemed crazy, right? What good could possibly come from the instructions that were given? Yet in obedience, they went and did what was required of them. In the first story, the jar of flour and the jug of oil. Can you picture it this morning? Those vessels, if they had life in them, would have been feeling at their wit's end, not knowing how they could possibly assist the widow and her son during this drought. They would be useless once their contents were depleted. But the prophet spoke life, and a miracle would happen within. They would produce the answer to prayer. The flour and the oil would not run out. They would continue to produce those jars and that jug would continue to produce that which was inside of them, giving them purpose. All I have is a small jar of olive oil. It's what we see in the second story. The small jar in comparison to the widow's dire situation, her sons to be taken from her. What good could come of the little resource that she had left? That little jar sitting there feeling insignificant, not knowing how it could bring light into the dark situation. The prophet speaks. 
gives an instruction, go collect more vessels, empty ones. What good are empty vessels going to be in this situation? The miracle happens in the pouring out of that little jar, of that which was inside the small jar, and the oil continued to flow. It filled the jars to the brim, the pouring out, meeting the need, providing purpose for that small jar. And I believe this morning, just like those vessels that had miracles stored up within them, God has got miracles stored up in you and I this morning. Sometimes the ask may seem too big, the prayer insignificant, the desire too heavy, the pain too much, the need too great, the situation too dark, the sin too bad, the habit unbreakable, the fear too gripping, the identity broken, but the light of Christ shines on the inside. In obedience to the voice of the potter this morning, there are miracles stored up in his vessels, you and I. We have discovered that as the potter molds the clay into the vessel, he desires it to serve a certain purpose. The plate, the bowl, the cup, the jar, the jug, the lamp, the pot, big or small. As the potter begins, he needs the clay to soften it. Maybe that is the place where someone is in this morning. You are feeling the pressure of the hand of God upon your life. Know this morning it's going to bring out good for you. Allow the potter to continue to soften you. Then the potter centers the clay. This morning, maybe there is someone here and you are realizing that you need to get back to the center of God's will for your life. You have strived and you have tried and now it's time to surrender. Then the careful hands apply the right amount of water and pressure to soften the clay. Maybe this morning as God prepares to soften your heart and open you up to receive all that he has for you, allow the potter to draw you close to him. As the work goes on on the inside, the outside takes shape. Don't fight back. Allow God to form you as he draws you up out of the miry clay. As the finished work is set aside by the potter, know that you have purpose. The finished work has been completed at the hands of the potter. He sets you aside for good works, plans and purposes that he has intended for you. God is forming you into the best version of yourself this morning. I think they're going to be playing just the video in the background as we just get into a time of ministry this morning. Would you take out your bit of Play-Doh? It's not real clay, it's salt dough clay. The video will just be playing in the background as you watch the potter's hand at work. You can take the bit of clay out of the baggie and put it in your hands and roll it around and feel the texture of it. Purpose and miracle. Purpose and miracle. Maybe this morning you are unsure of your purpose. I'm going to burst some bubbles this morning. Our purpose is not based on one thing alone. It's not based on your career. It's not based on your parenthood. It's not based on your family. It's not even based on your church life. 
Your purpose is not based on ministry or even your home life or your position in society. Your purpose in Christ is always adapting. It's always at work. Romans 12 tells us that for us to know the will of God, we need to have our minds being renewed by God. That is an ongoing event. Your everyday moments are in the will of God. As long as you are presenting yourself before God as a living sacrifice. The clay yet the vessel. A vessel surrendered to the hands of the potter. Miracles are taking place and through you every day. But we miss it. Conversations we have in the day. People who come across our way. A tip to a server. Assistance that you provide. A helping hand. A smile. A hug. A kind word. A word of encouragement. These and so many more are daily miracles that you bring about in someone's life yet go unnoticed by us at times. We wait for the big ones, right? The miracle of a change diagnosis, the meeting of a financial situation, the peace of strife among family members, even those who have Jesus living on the inside, the miracle to answer prayer that still hasn't come about after years of trying and striving. Yet, let us not lose sight of the fact that we are vessels with purpose and miracles that are stored up within us to bring the hope of salvation to a broken world. This morning as we go into ministry time, you may put your Play-Doh away if you want to. You can clean up your hands if you need to. When you're at home, just remember it. Allow Holy Spirit maybe to lead you into what it needs to be molded into to remind you of this morning. The wet wipe is there if you do need to clean up. (laughs) This morning, ladies, if you are seeking purpose, or seeking that extraordinary event that can only be explained by the intervention of the divine. We want to make room this morning at the altar for you to come as a vessel or as a marred lump of clay this morning, for the potter is at work. So this morning, ladies, if you would like to receive prayer, we're going to open it up this morning. Um, My ladies will come forward who are going to be praying with you. I'll also be down here. But you can just, if you are needing to receive prayer this morning, if there is something in your life where you just want to bring it before the potter, you want to lay it at the potter's feet, or you want to yield to the potter's hands this morning, Our encouragement to you this morning is you're welcome to come up and we want to stand with you in prayer and just minister to you as as Holy Spirit would lead. Um, And then thereafter we will be dismissed. So I want to give it some time this morning. Ladies can can come up to the front and we would like to just stand with you in prayer. This morning there is freedom in the house, right? We are here. We're not worried about anybody around us. This is between you and your potter this morning. You and your potter. This morning, if you are seeking, what is my purpose? I feel that the day goes by and I haven't fulfilled anything. I haven't reflected the light and the love of Jesus to anybody. This morning, you're welcome to come before God this morning and and just seek his face if there is an area in your life where you are asking God to mold and shape you to become more like Jesus, 
then this morning we want to stand with you and pray for that. We want to stand with you and, and agree with you. And as you come forward, know that that is a step of faith this morning. That is a step of faith, just yielding to the pressure. <laughs> Sometimes the pressure is not always nice. It can feel uncomfortable, but as you feel the pots are pressing down on you, know that it's only for a season. There will be a time when he lifts you up to be that finished vessel. And I know that the video is continuing to play in the background and as, as it just ministers to you this morning, as you just reflect on that and just feel Holy Spirit at work within you. Thank you, Lord.